Craig and Tony aspire to a lifestyle most think died with the pioneers. Australia's high country is their home, because home is where the mountain brumbies are. Descendants of escaped war horses, mountain brumbies are the heroes of poems, books and films. A symbol of independence and tenacity. They have the intelligence of the Arab breed and the strength of the Percheron, the horse that carried France's knights in armor. Brumbies have roamed the high country for at least 160 years. Craig Orchard is a Brumby runner. Catching and breaking in the wild horses, keeping their numbers in check in the national parks. Out here, it's just freedom. There's nowhere else you can get freedom, I don't think, like this. It's just brilliant. It's you against them, it's their home, so you've got to try and be a lot more cunning than them. Although he has been bitten, dragged from his horse, and kicked more times than he can remember, Craig has been addicted to Brumby running since catching his first wild horse at 14. Your adrenaline level gets that high, you just can't help yourself, you're just in it, you just can't stop yourself. Brumby stallions know intimately all the trails and escape routes, but don't have the same speed and stamina that Craig's thoroughbred has in a chase. Not that they will give in easily. Craig has pursued some mobs for 15 kilometers or more before getting close enough to use his rope. Like Craig, his fiancée, Tani Sievers, feels totally at ease with high country living. Friends have been drawn to the cities. Melbourne is six hours away, Sydney ten hours. Tani is not tempted. She and Craig plan to marry. Outdoors in the high country, among the peppermint trees and snow gums. Their wedding clothes arrive, mail order from the USA. They try them on. Craig has never worn a suit before, or a necktie. Tani, can I get you to come in here and help me put on this tie, please? Oh, oh, look at 
They plan to get a bit of land if they can, raise a few cattle, break in and sell horses. Don't use the band dress like what, dude? <laughs> really good. Oh, wow. Pretty smick. But it is January 2003. High in the mountains, lightning without rain sets off 140 small fires. Many merge, creating rivers of fire that cascade down the mountains. On January the 7th, the fire started, and we were meant to be married on the 14th of February. So I've got the wedding invitations on the table to send, and I've looked at Craig, and Craig said, just hold off a week longer, a week longer. And the fire's come through, and I said, we can't have this wedding. I said, this is ridiculous. The fires fuse into an unstoppable 800-kilometre-long torrent that spans three states. We were around the back fire breaking, and the only time that day we could see the sky, we knew it was wrong because it was just a great wall of flames coming over the ridge behind us. So we had to make a run back for the paddock because we would have got cooked alive out there in the bush. The sky was turning just blood red. There was just flames everywhere. Just, it was just everything was on fire. We got to the paddock, and the flames were coming back at us, so I just raced back to a little water hole we knew. I was here by myself, Craig was out of the bush, and I had my mopping bucket and my 44 gallon drum, and I was going to put out the spot fires. And all the bark started flying over the top here, and the, lot, the leaves were all alight now on the ground here. And I was putting them out, and a um, mop was too small, so I used a towel, it was wet. The last minute, I thought, bugger it, everything was chewed, so I just thought, bugger it, we'll go. So, I put all the dogs and the cats in the car and we went up to the CFA shed. I grabbed the firefighting pump, I rushed down to here, this little tiny water hole. At the time it was only little. I chucked the firefighting pump in there, got it turned on. I had the hose up on the road with the water spraying out of it. And I had a little pocket camera I carry for Brumby running. And I was just clicking away, still squirting water and <laughs> yeah, taking photos. I took 10 or 15 photos of right time the fire comes straight through. And then I just ran, I ran over here and ran for about 80 metres, probably, up around there and just lit everything, because I could see the main fire just coming, and it was coming from behind us as well. So I just lit everything around there, it's probably what saved them few little trees there, because it was only half as hot as the fire. I could see Bob coming across on the dozer, and by then it was just walls of flames everywhere, and he started shoving flames with the dozer. It was that dark you needed the fire to see anyway. It was just like midnight. And as a really hot gust kept coming, I'd just jump in under this little bank here and just duck my head just to take the heat off me. Because it was just unbearable to put your head up. It was, felt like you were going to cook. And then the whole fire front just come through. As it went through, the old hut there, it just burst into flames and was gone in a matter of minutes. Yeah, and Bob darted down here. You can see that little furrowed line there with the dozer. And there's flames hiding the, the homestead it was here. He tried to cut them off, but the flames were just, the dozer disappeared in the flames. I couldn't see the dozer until it came flying out backwards. And um, the hut had just, just exploded like it was gone in a matter of probably two or three minutes. Just, just gone. It was just, just nothing left. There was nothing we could do. We couldn't. It was just impossible to stop anything. So, yeah, we thought we were going to do it. Parked the dozer up. We put the fire, out, put the fires out on the dozer because it was pretty hot. It kept disappearing in flames. And then we just sat there and looked at each other for a few minutes. It didn't say much. <laughs> we couldn't say much. <laughs> Just dead silence, no birds, nothing. Then we thought we'd try and drive home. We got out in the main road and there was tree after tree after tree burnt down. And we drove into town on the bitumen. And the looks on their faces, um, you know, 
just and their head was all swelled up. I went to the pub. I got a couple of beers, light beers. We got the guns. We got a hundred or so bullets. Craig and the local cattlemen have the gut-wrenching task of shooting hundreds of cattle too burnt to save, burying them in huge lime pits. The worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Although utterly exhausted, Craig searches the bush for days putting burnt brumbies out of their misery. When you ride your horse up towards a mob of brumbies, they just gallop. If you're on a horse, they just take off because they think you're going to chase them. And I was riding up to mobs of brumbies and just riding right into them. And they just wouldn't run, they just, they looked, oh, they looked like they'd been hit by a bomb. I suppose they had in one way. The fires burn through 1,307,000 hectares and last for 60 days. It is a natural process of the high country that life quickly springs forth after a fire. By autumn, green saplings spread around blackened trees. Winter rains turn the bush canopy green once more. In spring, there is a carpet of sweet grass under the trees, and the surviving brumbies, the brightest and the fittest, again have full bellies. It is deceptive. The intensity of the fires was great. Craig and Tani won't see the bush fully regenerated in their lifetimes. The experience of the fires a brush with death. The predicament of the Brumbies is so profound, Craig and Tani hatch an idea, and it becomes a passion. To create a sanctuary for fine breeding mobs of mountain Brumbies. They won't starve, because we'll feed them through the tough times. They don't get chased, shot. Poison. Poison. Tani's uncle is guardian of the valley and sympathetic to their dream. They can provide a safe haven for Brumbies within the valley's 365 hectares in return for care of the land. Tani's roots are here. Early last century, her grandparents drove their cattle through the mountains in search of good grazing. They described the valley as a lush English park and built a hut here where they could overlook their herd. The hut is one of the few bush buildings to escape the fires. Tani thinks that is a good omen. She and Craig plan to build a hut for themselves further down the valley so they can live with the Brumbies. Before they tackle the valley, they set off for Melbourne. They have some shopping to do. after this one? Um, just keep going straight. Oh, hang on. Yeah, yeah go straight. Lonsdale Street. Go straight. Well, it's green. Quick, go, go, keep going. Just watch that flash car. He <laughs> <laughs> was in my way. Well, oh, stop. This is one of those orange ones. <laughs> it is. It's red now. Yeah, one of them. You look at the city and that, and you think, God, how do people live in that place? Do we stick behind this tram or? I'm going to be around there. Go. What am I stopped for? I don't know. We'll wait, we'll wait and see if we're doing any good. Um. There's no driver. 
I'll be at the other end. <laughs> I think you can follow him. I'm gonna have to. Is that Sheila's in the way? They are in the city to buy for a deferred event. They have set a new date to marry. We've known each other all our lives. Um, and I had my Deb ball in September 97. And Craig's sister was making a debut as well. And we went to an after party and just got talking and just seemed to end up together. Been there ever since. Yep. So. <laughs> Early on a hot summer's day, in the valley where they will live with the Brumbies, Craig and Tani prepare for their wedding. Over there. Have you got an upside down or inside out or? Just pull it over there, you watch. And now we can pull it over, <laughs> so at not... least it's on the outside. It's something not right here. Oh, this is mean? not the roof. We don't want this bin. We want the other bit. Is that the other bit, the roof? Hey. Go back to the trailer. <laughs> this is, in fact, the couple's third attempt to marry. Yeah. They were engaged three years before the fires and were to be married that summer. The wedding didn't happen because Tani yeah. fell gravely ill. Well, we were out horse riding and I come home that night and I wasn't very well. I ended up in hospital and they diagnosed me with a high data cyst and I was rushed to Melbourne and I had a lung and a liver operation. They kind of lost me once, and then yep. they got me back. Been in and out of hospitals for a long time. Yeah. Tani retrieves the wedding dress. It was stored on a friend's property when the fires came through. That had already been burnt out previously from another spot fire, and they had nothing left to burn. She has been preparing since dawn. You... Nerves don't set in until in the kitchen of their rented farmhouse, Tani pauses to have her hair done. Yeah. Is he on his way? Yeah. yeah. Craig gives Tani's horse a trim. The wedding begins in the saddle. John, Marcia? No, thank you. Yeah, beautiful. No. Oh, that's nice. Cheers, Tani's bridesmaids offer champagne to soothe the nerves. Come on, old lady. No stirrups, right? Yeah. Pick your dress up. Pick it up around you. Like, put it. Yeah. Oh, got one. Got your Here. Do you want me to hold yeah. them? That's right. Okay, so it's put in the stirrup and then you push them away. Grab her bum and grab it. What's that? Yeah. Drop it off another one. Is this come off? Here we are. Oh. Here we go. Well, we're getting close now, though. On yours. 
Hopefully the bride will be on time. The groom and his groomsmen ride in from the west. Tani's mother drives the bridesmaids in from the east. Her father ride in from the north. Three things in life: a good horse, a good dog, and my hat. But now I've got a wife. Horse still comes first because <laughs> I've got to rely on him. <laughs> I trust him with my life. A good dog. Well, I'll be bugger without yeah. my dog. <laughs> still got my hat. I've got a new hat. I've got a lovely wife. Next episode of Wild Valley, Craig and Tani face the realities of trying to make their dream come true in the bush. The track is broken down, that's gonna cost me cost me three days. I'm already nearly a week behind. Rain is just not helping whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> 